In this video, I'm going to talk about Copilot security setting uh, within Copilot Studio. Now, there are a couple of things which you can do from this setting. Is one is you can share your Copilot with your author, Copilot collaborator, or Copilot users who's going to consume the Copilot. You can use Copilot to set up authentication, authentication in terms of content access, content retrieval, setting up uh, teams or enter ID authentication. So those sort of things you can do that. Web channel security is all about setting up a direct client channel configuration uh, in terms of securing your Copilot to a greater level. Now, as you see over here, there are four options available, sharing, authentication, web channel security, and allow list. Now, from an authentication perspective, there are three different authentication currently available. One is no authentication whereby uh, the bot will not be authenticated. So it is publicly available in any channel. So that's the best part is that you can publish it, publish the bot into any channel. So because as there is no authentication, so there's no authentication variables involved in it. And then you can publish into any channel of your choice. It can be a public website, it can be a demo website, it can be into Teams, or it can be into customer service application. So you can do that. Authenticate with Microsoft specifically talks about intra ID authentication in Microsoft Teams and Power App. So if you are focused on setting up those Copilot to Teams and Power Apps channels, then uh, you need to use authenticate with microsoft the only downside with this approach is only teams and power apps channels are available and all other channels will be disabled authenticate manually what happens is like if you want to use microsoft enter id or oauth2 authentication provider at that time you can use authenticate manually option so take for example if you want to connect to a sharepoint data source okay at that point of time you can use OAuth to identity provider to connect to a SharePoint site so that user who is requesting content from your um, or the user providing a prompt response to your co-pilot uh, and if they want to retrieve the information from the SharePoint and present it to the user then authenticate manually is the option to specify web channel security now this is a mainly about uh, providing uh, a direct line if there is a direct line to facilitate communication between the co-pilot and your client application be it a web or a mobile application then uh, making sure that uh, you use secrets uh, basically as a mechanism to secure your uh, uh, application okay secret can also be used to obtain a token which is a preferred and secured method if you're writing an application where the client uh, runs in a uh, mobile app or a browser based application uh, secured access now when you turn this secured access if it is enabled then what happens is that the demo website will become unavailable so you cannot use demo website because now we are uh, making use of uh, secure uh, access and using a secret to basically obtain a token now uh, again think about it like if you publish your website to a demo website then what happens like anyone getting those getting hold of those url will be able to access it publicly so if you want to block that aspect then make sure that you use secure access turned on now, Microsoft Copilot Studio uses the bot framework direct line channel to connect your web page or app to the Copilot. Now, I have this learn article. I will go through this learn article in a while uh, just to give you more information about the web channel security model. So let's jump into the demo. So, so this is the Copilot Studio. This is one of the Copilot which I provisioned a while back. Now in this co-pilot, uh, this is a modern co-pilot experience. And uh, I can see that there are like a lot of, in fact, all the channels that are available for me to publish. So I can publish this co-pilot to a Teams channel. I can publish this uh, website to a demo website channel. So if I click on demo website, then I can publish this to a demo website channel. I can publish it to a custom website. I can publish it to a Twilio. I can publish it to Telegram. So if you see over here, it says token endpoint. So if I click on Slack, it says token endpoint, and this is a token. If I click on Skype, again, it's a token endpoint. I can even publish it to Dynamics 365 customer service, and I can publish it to Genesis as well. Now, if I click on settings over here, and if I go to security, 
and from here I, I will come up to the sharing option uh, after I cover the authentication option now if I go into authentication option this is no authentication the moment I select Microsoft enter ID authentication in teams and power apps and I click on save then it will give you a message it says authentication is set up for teams and power apps this turns off any other channels and disconnect the pilot from them now what do you mean by that is that you will be only focused on teams and power apps as a channel to publish your application now you cannot use any other channel you cannot use demo website you cannot use uh, other mechanisms so as you see over here from a channel perspective you can only publish it to microsoft teams and rest all application become disabled so if you want to uh, use this approach then you can only publish it to microsoft teams let's uh, again go back to the security go to the authentication and then from there uh, what i'll do is like i'll click on authenticate manually now authenticate manually basically is used if you want to access a resource uh, based on client id and secret so one example would be like say if uh, let me show you if i have that example so if i go to apps copilot studio so think about it like if you want to surface out the information from your internal knowledge repository like say sharepoint as a data source uh, and then uh, you want that uh, document to be surfaced out to the end user then what you can do you can add that as a knowledge source so take for example you add a sharepoint site into the knowledge source like in this example uh, if you see i have selected knowledge and i have connected the sharepoint site as a knowledge source so type in sharepoint and onedrive now once you do that if you want to turn on the authentication what you need to do you need to go into settings you need to go into the security and then from security authentication you need to select the third option now if you select the third option it will ask you for what service provider now in my case i have used azure active directory v2 i need to put in client id and secret now how do you create a client id and secret in portal.azure.com you go ahead and create an app registration and specify that you want to connect to a graph connector and then create a additional scopes as you see over here i've created additional scopes now what happens is like when i create the scope and configure the graph connector it will allow me to iterate through all the sharepoint sites iterate through all the files specified within the sharepoint uh, document library okay now if you have that scope i will be able to access the application and then surface out the information to the end user so this is how the authentication works now web channel security now web channel security if you read an instruction what it says is like microsoft copilot studio provides several channels by default some of which uses direct line to facilitate communication between copilot <coughs> and your client application so if there is a direct communication between copilot and your client application the direct channel lines are accessible by default without the need to configure a secret okay now think about it like if you are utilizing secret then a direct line secret is basically a master key that can be used to initiate conversation with the copilot and the secret can be used to obtain a token as well which is the preferred and the secured method while writing an application whereby your client uh, runs in a web browser or a mobile application now if you turn this on so if i turn this on then it will tell that this action renders the demo website unavailable so you cannot use demo website as well as any other direct line channel not using a secret or token so that means from this point onwards your copilot will be much much secured okay and if you're using a direct line channel uh, then uh, you may require this secret so you can generate secret one secret two and if secret one is compromised you can still work with secret two and change secret uh, one uh, to some different value uh, and there will be no downtime okay however remember that this action can take up to two hours to take effect so i'll just cancel this out now if you want to read more about web channel security you can go into learn article whereby they have given a detailed information about how uh, the you know, web channel security has uh, to be configured and it says there is a note if you have a teams only license you can't generate secrets to enable secure access because secure access tokens are created automatically for you and it is enabled by default when you use teams only license and this will give you some more information about copilot studio uses bot framework direct line channel to connect your web page 
or application to the copilot you can go through this article which will give you some more information about how to use secrets how to use token what is the purpose of required secured access and how long does it take to propagate the settings and uh, take those uh, effect into consideration and uh, so th these are all about you know uh, uh, how to swap a secret how to obtain a secret and how to regenerate a secret now if you go back again to the security over here there is an option which we have missed is sharing okay so we have covered authentication web channel security now sharing uh, uh, now before i go to sharing uh, there is an allow list basically it allows it tells the copilot to call your copilot as a skill okay now if it is turned on like uh, you can specify which uh, uh, skill you want to be uh, get it enabled now from a sharing perspective now i can share this copilot with a name with the security group so if i say name then i have another user called as lee Gu. i can select that person's name or i have a security group so if i type sec1 sec002 sec3 i can specify the security group and i can from a security group perspective this user's permission for this copilot the user can use the copilot if i select a user then the user needs to have some sort of a security role defined at a dataverse level now this user has a manager level access uh, the not does not have a transcript viewer permission so i can explicitly specify the environment security role of transcript viewer from here or i can go into manage security role and set the transcript viewer permission for this particular user or maybe i can just type in the user's name so if i know the user's name say adel v at I can just type in the user's name and then that user will get added into the system right so there are multiple ways and we can uh, the system will send an email invitation to a new user by uh, obtaining uh, the invitation to that users to utilize uh, the copilot authoring experience so that's it folks this is all about security functionality security settings within Copilot Studio. Thanks for watching.